Hey folks, Jonathan here, uh, playing around a little bit on the, the go-kart, go and we picked up some old trailer fenders here, and they're just going to, they're not going to, of course, cover the tire all the way. I, anyway, we're going to uh, start getting these mounted and on there, and then uh, uh, I'm working on the gas tank now, the gas tank I'm going to use. I, I was looking at this one, I don't like it very well, so uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, here's the tank we're going to put on it. Now this tank is galvanized and it's in good shape but it had a little rust inside and a little bit of uh, you know the, the tar build up, molasses, whatever you want to call it. So uh, what I did is I put some carburetor cleaner in it, some of the old school stuff and then uh, I put some bolts or some nuts and uh, actually put a bunch of uh, woodruff keys in it because I had a bunch and uh, had about ten times as many as I'd ever used in a lifetime. So anyway I've got it strapped to the old saw and we're going to turn it on here. So we're going to let it do that a while and we'll keep turning. Okay folks, we're working on trying to get these fenders cut out right and straight and uh, I kind of, uh, I cut that one wrong first. I had to put it back together and recut it, but uh, that's the first mistake I've ever made. Well today anyway. But uh, so anyway, I've got it about like a like I want it. Uh, of course, you know, I, there's no I couldn't find fenders wide enough to come out and cover the tires. That's going to work, and then I'm going to come down. Oh, let me knock everything off. I'm going to come down with a piece in the center here, and wrap it around and weld it in. And uh, I think that'll that'll end up looking good when we're done. And uh, still haven't cleaned my mess up around here, so uh, we've got to get at that. But anyway. We're going to do that and try to get these fenders mounted on and get that finished up. So, all right. Okay, I want to show you another thing too. Uh, I've got my headlights yesterday, and I'll tell you what, I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm upset or worried, but uh, this these came about 10.30 yesterday, and I just happened to be pulling in when the mailman pulled in. So I got these headlights, and uh, then uh, later on that day, I looked on the internet, and my steering wheel was marked as delivered at about 1.30 and which didn't make any sense because the mail usually don't run twice and it said it was on the front porch or front door so of course I instantly went out and checked and checked all around the yard and uh, no steering wheel to be found so it's showing delivered but it's not delivered so I don't know if the mailman messed up hopefully they didn't take it to the wrong place but uh, Something ain't right, so I'm, I'm getting worried about my steering wheel. Like I said, here's the headlights, and uh, these are, oh, uh, like for, you know, Harley. It's got the high beam indicators on them, the little blue lights, but uh, to let you know when the high beams are on. But they're nice little lights. They're uh, four inch, maybe. They're small, so that's what we wanted. They'll look good on it. Anyway, just want to show you them and. Hopefully that steering wheel will be in today. We'll see what happens. Okay, we got them about as close to the same as we can get them. And now I'm going to uh, make the pieces in between and see if we can get it looking decent. Like I said, I'd love to have gotten them wider, but that was as wide as I could get. Uh, I could get wider if I went to galvanize, but I didn't want galvanize. I didn't want the hassles of uh, trying to get the paint to stick and aggravating the weld. So, uh, it is what it is, so uh, I'm not going to say that I'm happy with them being narrow and the tire sticking out, but, you know, it's not uh, it's not really a big issue. Uh, you know, this is really just for looks anyway. All right. Okay, we've got our fenders tacked on in place where we want them. Uh, made a couple of, uh, let me see, made a couple of pieces to go in between. Now, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to roll these and uh, I'm going to take a piece of the old fender with me and see if we can roll them to the same same shape. Okay, my buddy Charlie came over the other day and he was rolling some eighth inch stuff so I know that uh, you know we're, we're loose on it so we won't have any problem there. Uh, I just got to make sure I roll one, one way and one the opposite.
not far off, a little bit close, but what are we doing? You get lucky like that too often. Let's do this one the opposite. Make sure. Okay. Now I could have uh, just bent them, but you're not going to get a perfect arch if you just bend them, and you know you have a few little kink spots. So these should work out really well. Okay, folks. Here's what we've got. We've got it tacked in place, and uh, I'm just going to weld it up and uh, oh, make it look as good as we can. We're not, you know, we're not going to do any body work. So, like I said, that flat black will make it make it look all right. Now I may before it's over with. Uh, slice this fender all the way down and add a piece in it and bring it out. It's a good chance I'm going to do that. I, you know, I shouldn't, but you know, if I get time, I will. Uh, I've got some new cutoff wheels coming today, so and so I may before so with end up doing it. Probably will. Probably shouldn't, but I probably will anyway. And then uh, we can roll us a piece on the uh, on that old roll slip roll and put it in there and just bring this fender out. Uh, maybe just you know a couple inches two and a half inches maybe just to cover the tire may, might look a little bit better I don't know I'll have to uh, cipher on it like but Jethro Bodine but uh, anyway that's where we're at so far I've got to go do a tow so I'll be back okay folks we've got both uh, pieces on but uh, I don't know I guess it's my OCD I'm gonna go ahead and cut these fenders and widen them Bring them over the tires. I just, I just don't like it, and that's the way it is. If it holds things up, it holds them up. But uh, just not happy with it the way it is. So uh, let me get to cutting, and I will uh, cut a couple pieces out. We'll roll it in the uh, in that slip roll again, just like I did these other pieces, and uh, should be able to uh, put them right on there and uh, make it look a lot better. So, anyway, here's what it looks like now, and I'll show you what it looks like with the with the fenders extended. Okay, uh, a little bit of daylight left, but uh, for anybody that don't know, I wanted to tell you real quick. This uh, this slip roll was given to me, and with a deal that I had bought, a uh, big machine, and uh, it's actually my nibbler. And the guy had this sitting outside, told me I could have it if I wanted it. And of course, I wasn't going to pass it up because I would have actually bought it, but. Uh, this thing sits outside. It sits outside at his place. Uh, as you can see, probably with the gears, I do keep it oiled and greased and stuff like that. And uh, it gets used pretty often. But one of these days, this is going to get in the shop and get restored when I, you know, do a little changing to get a, a little bit more area. But uh, but anyway, uh, I don't like it sitting out here any more than anybody else does. But you know, it, it still gets maintained and used, believe it or not. back it off a little bit and that should be what we need for our fender all right okay folks here it is with one of them tacked in yeah I think it looks better So uh, we'll keep at that. Go ahead and get it. I'll probably just go ahead and do the other one real quick and then uh, I'll get everything welded in. Shouldn't be too bad. But it uh, covers the tire a lot better. All right. Let me get at it. Okay, folks, no affiliation. I got my discs in today. Uh, there's 100 discs there. Well, 99 now, I guess. But uh, I put one on. I cut the entire fender and stuff with this. Just one disc. Now the three inch strip I cut with the plasma, but the fender I cut with this disc, and I figured I'd go through a couple of them cutting it. It's pretty thick fenders. So uh, I'm not affiliated in any way with this company or anything else, but I, I bought these on uh, on eBay, and they are just this Piranha Power, and uh, they're United States uh, 
they're you know they're in the 48 states, but they uh, I'm sure imported, but I didn't have to wait for them to come from China. So anyway, I recommend them for sure. Thirty-one dollars for a hundred of them, so I won't have to buy any for a while. All right. Okay, folks, we've got them both on and all spotted up, and uh, uh, the cutoff wheel uh, still got by with the first one I put in it. So uh, good product. All right. And if it wasn't a good product, I'd tell you. But uh, anyway, I've got a lot of welding to do, a lot of grinding to do. Uh, I think it's going to work out good, though, but it looks a lot better. And uh, we'll just keep at it, and we'll get it knocked out before it's over. Okay, folks, I want to try to get everybody's opinion on something. And uh, you can just uh, post what you think on there. But I was thinking about, I've got this gas tank that... Of course I got stuff in it I've, I've been shaking it clean and I just got it blocked off down here but it's actually a good tank it's good and solid it don't leak anywhere but I've and I've got the original straps for it it's got a neat end on it you know both ends I like it but I was considering doing something and hopefully you'll be able to see this I can mount it up under and make it where the gas cap comes up through and uh, in the center or I can use the old straps and actually mount it on the outside and uh, I kind of like the look of the outside a little bit here. and uh, with the old original straps but uh, I just wanted to get everyone's opinion on that I, I thought it would look good on the outside but uh, you can tell me what you think and uh, it's sort of up in the air with me I don't know whether I want to mount it outside or inside so anyway uh, I look forward to hearing the opinions on that and uh, got something I want to talk about okay I've been thinking about something and uh, what brought this on is I was in the store a while back and uh, I as most of you know I drink Pepsi in a can and I drink too much of it but that's what I do and uh, I, I went into a store to get a can of Pepsi and they didn't have it and they had bottles and you know I, I just don't prefer drinking it out of a bottle and you know I got my own reasons for that but most of us you know a lot of it's got to do with uh, with the fact that aluminum is recyclable and uh, I just like the taste of it out of a can it stays cold I, I like it so uh, anyway I said something to the lady at the counter and uh, she told me that the reason that they wasn't selling uh, the, the Pepsis in the can at that particular place was the fact that uh, plastic was more recyclable than aluminum. And although I know that aluminum is the number one recycled material in the world, I didn't want to get in an argument. So I just left it at that. And, uh, and I've you know, seen some other stuff, you know, everybody, you know, younger people and stuff talking about recycling and stuff like that and you know I know a lot of you are, are older and I know that I grew up probably like you did if you're 60 70 years old because you know growing up in West Virginia with no money you know if you wanted something you know if you wanted a bicycle you're gonna have to go find an old bicycle that was broke and fix it if you wanted it so uh, or you know anything like that so uh, you know when we was young uh, of course you go to the the grocery store you got paper bags and use the paper bags to to make book covers with to keep your books in good shape because I mean you wasn't gonna buy any book covers and uh, you know there wasn't any plastic bags and uh, back then I remember being young uh, I was in 4-H one time and we used to collect glass and recycle it and we just had to separate it you know from the uh, I guess the collar glass from the uh, clear glass and we would throw it in barrels and bust it up and uh, they recycled it. They recycled newspapers. And uh, nowadays, you know, it's a big deal. But then you go down the roads and you see plastic bottles and trash and stuff everywhere. And uh, it just gets me that the fact that they didn't, they don't think that we was, you know, uh, recycling back then when everything we done was recycling. If I seen a 10 cent bottle, I'd, I'd fight a copperhead jump off a bridge to get it whatever I had to do you know that was 10 cents and and uh, nowadays you know bottles are not returnable and and 
you know, they rarely use glass on anything. And, uh, and plastic, you know, very, very little recycling going on with the plastic bottles and, uh, you know, styrofoam, plastic bags. I mean, uh, you know, they, they want to talk about, you know, the oceans and, and, you know, everywhere else getting trash and, all, you know, all the stuff in the landfills. And, and, I mean, it was brought on themselves. I mean, uh, that's just the way it is. And, you know, uh, when, uh, I, when I was little, you know, my mom didn't go buy diapers. I mean, you know, she had a wringer washer and a clothesline and, you know, that's what she used. And, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, they, they think that they're, uh, they're really doing something when, you know, we was doing way more back then. And, uh, and when you make a product, you know, such as a riding lawnmower, if you make a product that lasts for, for 30, 40 years, you know, like some of these old cub cadets would do and, and you know, mowers like that, uh, you know, you didn't need to recycle because you still had them. And now, you know, everything's made to, to fall apart. And, and you know, I, I'm sure that everybody knows that. And, you know, cars are the same way. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. I was talking to my wife earlier, and, you know, when I met her, she was driving an old uh, 78, 79 model Toyota Corolla. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't in, you know, good shape then. And, uh, but where are all them cars now? Uh, you don't see 70s model Toyotas and Hondas and Nissans and stuff around. Uh, they're just gone. And, you know, it's, it, the way that they were built, they wasn't built to last. And, you know, you might get two or 300,000 miles out of them, but, uh, you know, time kills them. And, uh, you know, that's, it's a shame that the society has come to that, but I mean, it, it, it has. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons, you know, what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, building this uh, this go kart for my grandson, and building it from a heater instead of building it from scratch. You know, it wouldn't have been a problem to to cut the steel out and bend it and do whatever I wanted to do to to make the body like you know, like I wanted it. But uh, you know, when you when you see something and uh, you know you envision what it is, just jump on it and go. But uh, and you don't have to have new stuff. You don't have to have new steel. You don't have to have new machines. Uh, that old uh, uh, slip roll was, it's uh, at, at least 120 years old. So, uh, you know, it, it's the latest and greatest. It's not, not all the time the best. But anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. And uh, we'll get back on this go kart. And I'm going to get some welding and grinding done tonight. And uh, until next time, bye.